Welcome to Jenny's New Classical World. We are going to explore a virtuosic and an exotic piano solo piece by Franz Liszt. This is the Hungarian Rhapsody Number no. 10. So why did Liszt write the Hungarian Rhapsodies? What was the cause? Hungarian as a topic was not something exotic to Liszt. It was actually a way for Liszt to make contributions to his country. He was born in the western part of Hungary called Reading. And he doesn't speak Hungarian, but like thousands of Hungarians at the time, they have German as their mother tongue. Now, Liszt was a very patriotic figure. He would wear and perform in the national Hungarian costume and to show his protest against the Austrian domination of his country during the time. And he once raised 24,000 gulden from playing Vienna concert to donate to Hungary. And making the largest donation to be sent to from a private source. When he returned to Hungary for the first time since childhood in 1839, people cheered him as a national hero, even far more powerful than the leading politicians of his country. It was during this time Liz had developed an extreme interest in gypsy music and Hungarian folk music. He had listened and observed many of the best gypsy bands their music have inspired him to write a series of compositions called Magyar Dalog, meaning Hungarian National Melodies. Many years later, these compositions were revised and published under the generic title, The Hungarian Rhapsodies. The 10th Hungarian Rhapsody is part of this published collection. And what is colorful about these pieces is that it evokes a gypsy band. There are two prominent examples in here. The first example is that it has a cembalom effect. This is trying to make the piano sound like a cembalom. Can you imagine that? Here is a passage that demonstrates the cembalom effect. Liszt actually writes in the score, like the cembalom. A cembalom is an instrument coming from Hungary. It has 48 strings stretched over a sounding board and played with small hammers. This uses this cembalom effect in also other Hungarian rhapsodies and also other pieces as well. The second element that portrays this gypsy band sound is this mournful augmented seconds, which is also known as the gypsy scale. The augmented second interval is and let's use this interval in this melody. The virtuosic part about this piece is Liszt's favorite use of these large leaves, meaning large musical intervals, such as this left hand here. And the glissando is another technique that Liszt loves to use to dazzle his audience. I'm showing a tip. That Liz talk about how to play the glissandos. He wrote in a letter to Olga von Meyerdorf and saying, using only the nail, either the thumb or the second or the third finger, without even the tiniest area of flesh. Liz's way of playing the glissando used only one finger, which is the thumb, for downward, the second, only one finger, and the third. Everyone has their different ways to play glissandos. It depends on how comfortable one feels. And least way for me is not comfortable because I have a small finger and that my snail is also very small. So if I slide in this way, it will actually burn my flesh. But if I slide with the thumb supporting, it will stand so that when I slide, it will help to keep my finger straight and that I will not burn my flesh. When Liszt visited Pest Hungary in the year 1846, he was greeted by Benny Agresi, who was a Hungarian composer, dramatist, librettist, translator, and actor, who had wrote a piece called Welcome in dedication and publication that year for the celebrated virtuoso. Liszt, in a friendly gesture, had returned and also dedicated to Agresi his Hungarian Rhapsody number no. 10. Now, Benny Agresi. This name is not so much familiar to us or as famous as the other composers, but one of his work called The Appeal was recognized as the second Hungarian national anthem. This composition was being used in quotation or also arrangement by other composers, including Liszt himself, Kodai, and Dohnanyi. 
Let me present you Liszt Hungarian Rhapsody number 10.